Lab, everybody, with Terry, the star of the show. Can anybody tell me what this reference is, by chance? So as you know, I've been featuring a lot of these strange one-off 2-watt amplifiers. We had uh, great success with the 6CL6 amplifier. A lot of you guys emailed me, you're building it, and you're loving it, and that's very cool. But I also had some people that inquired and said, hey, I love the 2-watt design but I'd rather do it with standard tubes, like a 6V6 and a 12AX7. So I thought, all right, I accept your challenge. And I have built that amp. Here it is, guys, on a little Hammond 7x5 chassis. Stars a 6V6 and a 12AX7. Same circuitry as the 6CL6 amp. And it's built on a secret let me give you guys a tour of this chassis. I think you're going to like this. So as you guys know, when I set off to make a little repurposed amp, I have to have a nice enclosure. In this case, I have a Sylvania antenna amplifier box. It's Bakelite. These were the original holes for the knobs. I had to make this one for the input jack. And if you see this V cut out, that actually goes inside of the cabinet. So for my chassis to go in flush, I had to actually mill that triangular opening. So this little guy, when it's complete, is going to slide in this cabinet. There's a little retainer right there. Flipping around, it's got my logo, and I've got these beautiful Newcomb record player spline knobs. And as a matter of fact, the controls are also from that Newcomb record player. So she's got a little bit of a vintage appeal, I would say. The Sylvania logo looks pretty good. The Bakelite has a few minor scratches, but all in all, she looks gorgeous. I added the plexiglass, and there's what I call the Rudolph light behind it, which is going to illuminate the glass red. And that lamp is one of those new LED jukebox lamps. The layout of the chassis is pretty basic. I did have to mill to set the power transformer. We have vintage tube sockets. I used old cinch sockets. This is an old output transformer. It's a 5K primary, but you can use the ones that are available from Amplified Parts. It's the P-T31 5K primary. 8 ohm output, pretty common, very inexpensive. And this guy has an old Delco 6v6 as the heart of the engine. All right, now for the fun part. Let's go bottom side. Okay, here's the moment you've been waiting for the bottom side tour of the little 6v6 2 watt amplifier. So what's the first thing that we see? We've got the D-Lab. ECBA. This is my Class A driver board. All the circuitry for this amplifier resides on this board except for the power supply which is over here. And this is another little circuit board that I offer called the Cub 1. This is a fully configurable board. You do not have to use the values of caps and resistors that I did. It just gives you the base for a typical power supply setup that you'd see in these amplifiers. My power transformer is tucked down here below and its high voltage secondary is only about 140 volts AC. That's going to a full bridge rectifier that's hidden under here. It's a little NTE 5307. Goes to the first filter cap which is a 68 microfarad at 400 volt. That's my high voltage feed that goes to the primary of the output transformer. Then we go through a 1K resistor, and then we hit this cap, and then the orange line you see comes off that junction. That's the screen feed for the 6V6. Then we go through a 10K resistor. We have another 10 microfarad cap. Then that shoots over here, the yellow line, that's my preamp voltage. The ECBA board did have provisions on it for those resistors that are on this cub board. But in this case, I elected to go ahead and keep them here. And I actually cut this board off so it would fit 
into the chassis and it's mounted on three insulated standoffs. My bias resistor for the 6V6 is a 470 ohm resistor and the plate voltage on that 6V6 is around 180 volts. So we're pulling just a little over 20 milliamps of current but that is enough to take this guy into Class A operation while still delivering great distortion. So if you envision a champ, you're up around 400 volts DC. They use that same 470 ohm resistor. So guess how much current is going through a champ. But the beauty of this design is, guys, you don't need to drive that 6V6 to its extremes to get that nice Class A tone. I'm only doing this with 20 milliamps and wait till you hear it. Alright, right here is my 12AX7. So we're coming through the input jack to pin 2 through a 68K resistor. You can see that all my leads are extremely short so this amp is a noise free design. Okay, it's test time for the little 2 watt amplifier. I'm using my normal test speaker which is a pair of 12 inch Celestians wired in parallel for 8 ohm load which is what this amplifier wants. This pot here is my tone control with the gain power switch on the back. It's nice having those old Newcomb controls laying around. Okay, so the amp is on. And you hear no power supply hum. Okay, let's make sure she's alive. Yep. And here she's got quite a bit of gain. All right, now I'll hook up a guitar. Once again, guys, I'm not the player, but you can at least get an idea. Okay, so it's about mid volume. Let's take her to about three quarter. last. So you can hear she wants to distort so if you could actually play which I can't you could probably get some great tones out of this amp. Talking about tone here is kind of bass response. typical fender panning tone control which goes from 500 puff for your highs and 0047 for the lows same type thing you'd see in a Princeton all right so another great two watt amplifier has been created and it gets to reside in this beautiful Sylvania Bakelite cabinet now keep in mind guys the only reason this build was so tight is I had to select a chassis that would fit that cabinet and obviously there are some modifications required but you could build the same circuit on say a 10 by 6 Hammond chassis and put it in a standard wood cabinet and you get the same results okay the only thing that I'd recommend is keep your wire lengths short okay and in this case the ECBA board does that work for me as you can see there's minimal wiring so that helps to package things and make it simple for you to build. If you guys want a copy of the schematic, shoot me an email. I already have a JPEG created. I'll send it right out to you. Every component on this chassis is obtainable. Okay, the only thing that's always the mystery is the power transformer. Okay, so just search around they're out there a lot of these old transformers actually came out of fm tuners okay so i actually have one of these transformers right here in my hand you take a look at the bottom you see the pin out it's a very small transformer i believe this one came out of a realistic tuner the only bummer would be is if you were to go out and buy a tuner for say fifty dollars just to get that transformer, that's not such a great deal. 
but the specs are on this guy you've got your 120 input you have 6.3 volts AC at 3 amps and this one says about 125 volts at 45 milliamps but I find that since these were built back in the day when the line voltage was lower these actually hover at around 150 volts AC unloaded when you get ready to use them so anyway I've supplied you guys with schematics you've seen the build it's another one that you can put together yourself and have fun with a hobby hope you enjoyed it